All right, everybody, we're going to kind of continue on with the collapse of Rome here, try and crush this in about 10 minutes or so. And one of the things that was hindering ancient Rome is going to be their military problems. The pressure on Rome's borders, as we'll see here in a second, was massive. It began to wear down the empire. The once mighty Roman legions that salted the earth in Carthage with Scipio Africanus and the victorious armies of Julius Caesar, well, that was a long time ago. And, you know, what you very rarely hear about because of isolationist history is while Rome is existing in the West, over in Asia and China is a sister empire known as the Han Dynasty. And the Han went on a massive campaign to get rid of the Mongols. And as they drove the Mongols north out of China, they began pushing them, you know, westward across the flat part of Asia, the Asian and Russian steppes. Well, as the Mongols fled, moving across Asia into Europe, they attacked and forced other barbarian groups out of their area. They pushed the Huns out of Hungary and into Germany. The Visigoths and the Vandals and other barbarian groups were shoved into the Roman-held territory like a snowplow. The Mongols, Han Chinese, the Mongols, to shove everybody westward. And the Romans were simply too spread out to defend their empire. There was too much borderland to cover. Whatever village or town they went to protect, if they slid over here, the barbarians went around them. Then they maneuvered themselves over here, the barbarians came this way. And the Romans were undone by their own technology. Every weak point that the barbarians find, they come in and they find those roads. And those roads lead to towns. And the barbarians, at first they destroy stuff, and then they look at this Roman technology, and they're like, man, this is really good, let's adopt it. And they keep following those cobblestone roads, follow the Elbrick Road, follow the Elbrick Road, and all roads lead to Rome. So Rome was just getting assaulted on all sides. So the military was not strong enough to, de to defend itself anymore. The Romans had to depend on mercenaries, hired soldiers to fight. So they had to hire southern Germanic barbarians to form their northern cousins. Problem with the mercenary is they're only as loyal as long as you can pay them. And we know Rome is running out of money. And this leads to, oh, my clicker's not working. There we go, economic problems. Economic difficulties had contributed to the collapse of Rome for a while now. Inflation, with the government just making coins and handing out currency, reaches massive epic proportion. In order to get soldiers into the army, their pay was doubled. This led to an increase in taxes to pay the soldiers. To move men into the army quickly, their training time was cut down. The old punishments like decimation, where you remember we went every tenth person, were extremely lax. The army just simply isn't good enough anymore, and it is costing a lot of money. The barbarian attacks begin to hit the Roman farmland, and it reduces their agricultural um, production. Not only was land overworked or being destroyed, but imports coming in from Asia are now cut off. Imagine like taking a hose when the water is running and kinking it. There's all that water built up behind you, but it can't get to the end of the hose. Well, that was the Roman Empire. The trade routes were kinked off and, and kinked up um, because of the... Um, warfare of the barbarians. Not only was agricultural production imports cut off, but so was tribute from the conquered areas. And then pirates began to pop up. Man, this is the Roman Empire. You know how we deal with pirates? Man, Julius Caesar was cutting the right hands off the arms of warriors, and now we got to deal with pirates? Are you kidding me? 
But Rome had, who had grown so fat from years of, you know, being the shop vac and the milkshake slurper and sucking all the good stuff out of their conquered lands while it's beginning to crumble. And as always, when, you know, you can't get, you know, uh, food coming in from Asia and the, uh, the sea routes from Egypt are cut off and barbarians are coming through here, man, Rome is in bad trouble. The Roman trade network is cut off. All right, the hose is kinked. And then, as we said, we are always going to make more money and hand it out, which causes the currency to lose its value. The debasement of coins, the currency of the empire is gone. So the Roman government began to confiscate property, which could no longer be used for private business. If I'm not running my business, I can't pay my taxes. So many of the people of the once rich and wealthy and glorious Roman Empire of Pax Romana are living hand to mouth. They're not only worried about not just making it to see the sunrise come up again, where is their next meal going to um, come from? And then added to that, all right, Emperor Trajan is going to overextend the empire by conquering over the Danube River. And when he gets up into here called Germania Magna, here come more barbarians. So Emperor Trajan here is going to try and build a wall. Here's the wall. All that's left of Hadrian's Wall, and as you can see, the British say, well, the only thing good about it is it keeps the sheep in Scotland. We're going to add to that social um, difficulties. Right? Um, from 268 to 275, there were several rebellions that forced the emperors to build defensive walls, not only around Rome, but around their own palaces. This is inside Rome. And they brought their best soldiers home to defend the palace in the city. So those on the outskirts fighting these barbarians are second grade like JV troops. The poor quality soldiers are either fighting the barbarians or are hired mercenaries. Insane emperors well, is where Rome is going to suffer enormous losses in the Senate. Society was now being driven by military men, like Julius Caesar, who liked organization and hierarchy, general, colonel, major, captain, first lieutenant, lieutenant second lieutenant. And these generals began to limit the upward social mobility of people. No longer did people have the chance to better themselves, to raise their standard of living, even if they got an education. All freedom was slipping away. Merchants were the only ones surviving as they were trying to find and fill the economic gaps of the state. But some people were living high on the hog. The rich people, man, we got an indoor pool here. We got a nice courtyard. We've got libraries. We've got a nice house. While the poor people are being stuck in the place like the Circus Maximus, given, you know, poor bread to eat, so a little bit of bread and water will make you feel full. People were living so high on the hog that they didn't want to work anymore. The one time, you know, thirst for doing for the good of the community and patriotism and working hard for Rome is now gone by greed and laziness. And so we're going to get to, and I'll put this up on the board on, on Monday, are these civil, civil difficulties. In 50 years, there were 25 different emperors. This instability demonstrated four distinct problems that we're going to quickly review on Monday that the empire has got to face. First and foremost, Rome had lost their authority. All right. Nobody was afraid of Rome anymore. Scipio offered Canus the salt in the earth. Caesar's cutting off the right hands of defeated warriors. Well, Rome is now seen as old and weak and feeble. They lost their authority. Secondly, rampant corruption had weakened the civil service beyond the point of inefficiency. People 
were looking out only for themselves, like that last side, that rich, lavish lifestyle. They were selfish. They were greedy. They didn't care about the big picture. They didn't care about the empire as a whole. They just took what they could. It's like the grasshopper in the ant story. I'm going to live great today, tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going to um, worry about it. They hoarded things. Like people buying you know, 75 gallons of water during one of our hurricanes while other people had absolutely nothing. Number three, the trade routes, the lifeblood, the overland trade routes coming from Asia, the Mediterranean trade routes coming from the Mediterranean Sea, the lifeblood of Roman tribute and taxation um, were disrupted. They were kinked off by more barbarian wars, and so there's no more tribute or tax money coming in to the empire. And then there's the printing of money. Making money and handing it out had really made Roman currency worthless. So people don't know what to do. They don't know how to get out of it. And then this guy comes along, Emperor Diocletian in 284, is going to sever the empire in half. So we will pick up with Emperor Diocletian on Monday. And I will definitely see you guys then as we will end mercifully ancient Rome.